Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. I told my husband, who are we as parents to say if Lehelia can or cannot play football? A young woman makes a men's varsity football team to sheer will and determination. A street performer turned painter finds an audience in the tourism capital of Hawaii. A child of divorce finds solace and a new family in dance. Find out why the Kauai town of Kapa'a has the largest concentration of Mexican restaurants in all of Hawaii. With graduation right around the corner, you will want to learn how to make this favorite lei among graduates. Travel to Mililii and discover the traditional Hawaiian practice of opelu fishing. And hear about the origins of the instrument that made Hawaiian music famous around the world. All in this episode of Hiki No, coming to you from Kaiser High School, home of the Cougars. That's next on the nation's first statewide student news network, Hiki No. Can do. We're here at Kaiser High School in East Honolulu on the island of Oahu. Kaiser is the only public high school in Hawaii that offers three international baccalaureate programs, the career-related, middle years, and diploma programs. The IBDP is a college preparatory framework that teaches students skills for success in higher level education and beyond. Students pick six rigorous courses from a variety of subject areas, including two languages that help to increase their cultural understanding. Students learn in cohorts with other IB candidates, allowing them to help each other in their academic pursuits. Our first story is by students on the opposite end of the island from us. Here, young journalists from Waianae Intermediate School tell the tale of a young woman who would not be denied. <laughs> Write it down. <laughs> Lehalia was a kicker for the Kamehameha schools throughout the 2017 high school football season. Ever since I was a little girl growing up, I was always surrounded in the atmosphere of football and that's what planted the seed in me to love the game this much, uh, enough to make me actually want to sh strap on the helmet and actually play. We wanted Leigh to join the team because we always knew that it was her dream to play football and for her to come out senior year and we were just really encouraging of her to come out. I had doubts on how she was going to be in the beginning and as she progressed, she got a lot better. In order to play football, she had to get her parents to agree. Um, I didn't say yes. Um, Lele and her mom went behind my back, um, had her try out for the football team, and when she made the team, then they decided to tell me that she was playing football. I told my husband, who are we as parents to say if Lehelia can or cannot play football? And just said, you know, we'll just leave it up to the coaches and let them decide if she's good enough for the team. Throughout the 2017 football season, Lehalia Ponui was a kicker for the Kamehameha Schools Warriors varsity football team. Saturday practices, kickers, um, you don't really have to show up, but I come anyway because, you know, my boys have to do it, so I got to do it too. Now with the season behind her, Lehalia doesn't have to look too hard to find her helpers. Your deadlines is all approaching, so you need to start looking at all of these college apps. Definitely with the help of my teammates. Um, Having a football team in general um, wouldn't have been possible if I didn't have a team like I did. Um, my coaches have definitely helped me get better in kicking my mechanics and techniques. And um, without Coach Albu's help, by actually letting me be on the team, this dream would have come true as well. The support from my family and friends um, from start to end has definitely um, uplifted me and allowed me to, um, you know, make this dream come true for me as well. It's an amazing feeling, seeing my daughter on the field, playing football, and hearing the spectators uh, just cheering her on. Now that she's lived her dream, Lehalia is looking to assist others. Uh, if you love something and um, you're passionate about it, I would definitely think you should go for it 110% with all your heart because um, you don't want to look uh, back 10 years later and say that you regret it. You know, you just gotta, life is too short to have any regrets. This is Franchelle Megadoy from Wanai Intermediate School for Hiki No. Hiki no is now on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Hiki no Can Do. Our next story takes us to the Manoa District of Oahu, where students at Mid-Pacific introduce us to a street artist and his quest for an audience. 
discovered early on as a young boy that I loved to paint, I loved to draw, and, uh, and so that was sort of like my way to lose myself into my own little world. Wayne Gabilo is a self-taught street artist who performs in Waikiki. Art in motion, as he calls it, incorporates music, dancing, and audience participation to keep the crowd entertained. A key feature of his style is that it looks like a chaotic mess of flying paint, ripped up newspaper, and bottle caps. It looks like something any child could do, until the final product is revealed. Wayne and his brother started out in entertainment as a juggling act, but as a painter, he got his idea for a show while observing a bartender, flipping bottles while making drinks. Then right there the light bulb went up. Oh, maybe I should do a show while I'm painting. Wayne began performing in Kalakaua Avenue in Waikiki, but it wasn't a smooth journey. Ironically, it was his success at attracting a crowd that led him to almost stop painting and start looking for another line of work. Eventually, the crowds would get bigger and bigger and bigger. That affected me because the, the police would shut down my show. I had to have a bodyguard watch so the crowd wouldn't get too big. And then eventually I did get get a citation for the police. That caused me to stop painting on Waikiki. A chance meeting with the chef from Tanaka of Tokyo took him to King's Village. The chef offered Wayne a job because he thought Wayne's juggling ability made him a good candidate to become a teppanyaki chef. But Wayne saw another opportunity to paint. A, an idea came in my head. But this looks like a nice place to paint. I wonder if I talk to the management they'll let me do my show here. Wayne was able to convince management to give him a shot at performing at King's Village. So they said, well, we can try you out for one week. And that's all I needed, a chance. That one week turned into months, then years. Today, Wayne has been at King's Village for the past 12 years and even has a gallery there. Wayne Gabilo believes that art can be anything that you have a passion for. Through his art, he hopes to inspire others to find their passions. This is Daniel Cam from Mid-Pacific Institute for Hiki no. We're back at Kaiser High School. I'm standing at the Peace and Sustainability Garden on the slopes of Cocoa Crater where we support, well, sustainability. This garden was started last year by Mr. Paul Belaz, one of our English teachers, and is designed and managed by the Wipeout Crew, one of our school clubs. Some of the crops include sunflowers, spinach, eggplant, beets, and basil, just to name a few. We take you now to the Eva side of Oahu, where students from James Campbell High School tell the story of a young man who found himself and a new family in his art. He takes advanced placement classes, attends multiple after-school clubs, and then performs for dance studios around the island. Christian Jacob Nguyen may seem like he has a lot on his plate, but for this junior, a busy schedule is the least of his problems. The way it happened was I was just sitting in my room and then my mom and my dad came to talk to me and at first I was just crying because I, I knew like this was going to happen and I didn't want this to happen because I was, I was really, I, I feared about my sisters and I feared about myself as well. Christian's parents separated a couple weeks before he was to attend his first day at James Campbell High School. I had to go through what most divorced kids had to go through and that is um, watching your family separate and slowly separate as they as he grew up, you know. He was faced with a dilemma. Stay with dad and live in Hawaii, or go with mom and his sisters to live in Kentucky. You know, my sisters gave me so much happiness and, you know, it was so hard watching them leave at the airport, you know. I, I really missed them so much because, like, I really wanted to watch them grow, you know. Whenever I, would, I wouldn't be with my friends or I wouldn't be with, you know, my dance studio, I'll be with them. They were so young, they, they didn't really understand what was going on, and I, I really felt for them because I didn't want them growing up to be 
you know, lost or, you know, lo confused about life. Christian chose to stay with his father in Pearl City. In the morning, that's a one-hour bus ride to Campbell High School. I still love him because he, he, I know he still supports me and he does talk to me whenever he has a chance to because he's always working and I support him for that. You know, he gives me so much, so much to be emotional about because, you know, he gives me a place to stay. He gives me a place to live. It, it got, I got comfortable with it because, you know, um, a house is a home, you know. And any house is fine. Life may have pushed Christian to the ground, but he got back up and started dancing. Dancing gave, gave me a lot of life when I really didn't want to live my life anymore. You know? And um, throughout this time of my life, I was really introverted. I really didn't want to talk to anyone. I didn't really want to make friends anymore. Dancing, it was just a way for me to get away from myself, get away from all this drama. and. I honestly, I'm glad that dancing kept me alive to this day, and I'm, 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 I'm glad that dancing kept me happy throughout this moment. Dancing offered me so much. It offered me a way to get out of my shell, and it offered me a way to make friends. It offered me a way to connect to other people. Although his mom and sisters are thousands of miles away, he still had family in places he did not expect. At the playground dance studio, um, I made so much friends. They'll help you when you're down. They'll know when you're sad. They'll know when you're happy. I'm actually currently working my way up there to become a choreographer at the Playground Dance Studio. And I know, I'm so inspired to just teach other people what I've learned through other people. And that's, that's what dance brought to me, because dance is sharing, you know. Dance is a community. Christian's love for dance symbolizes his perseverance through his life struggles. This is Jacob Roy from James Campbell High School for Hiki No. We're back here at Kaiser High School. For many years, girls just didn't have our own locker room. Just this year, a new locker room was built to show support for the women's athletic program. It has a new lighting system that adjusts to output depending on the outside light. It also has solar panels to maximize the energy efficiency. This is the first girls locker room ever built at Kaiser High School. Our next story takes us to the island of Kauai, where students from Kapa'a High School tell us about certain type of cuisine that is always available in their town. Kapa'a Town has two fire stations, three grocery stores, a Starbucks, and nine Mexican restaurants. In such a small town, how could so many Mexican restaurants compete with each other? I don't think it's a competition because everybody has their own style. In Mexico, it's a big, big, big country. Every state has a different type of way to make food. The nine restaurants in Capa serve food from a variety of regions in Mexico, from the coast of Guerrero in southern Mexico to the slopes of Oaxaca to Mexico City. Each has a different style and serves Mexican food in their own unique way. A specialty served at El Pastor is beef tongue. We're the only food truck and restaurant establishment that actually does um, beef tongue. We have a lot of people, all the Filipinos, all the Latinos come and eat it. And some, we cook like two or three tongues a day, so. Another item unique to the food truck is cooking meat in the Al Pastor style kitchen. They do the Al Pastor on the rotisserie and it's so yummy. It's like bacon with a Mexican twist. Other restaurants feature homemade tortillas, local ingredients, and Hawaiian inspired dishes. Many of these recipes have been passed down from generation to generation. Each dish has a taste of their family's unique history. For Tony of Paco's Tacos, serving agua frescas brings back memories of his youth in Mexico. When we were like little kids, my mom always make us, you know, like lunch and she always choose one flavor to make, like sometimes we make horchata, the rice rice agua fresca, and uh, sometimes tamarind, sometimes jamaica, the hibiscus tea. And that's what we make here in uh, a pack of tacos. While the spike in restaurants could be because of the delicious food, it could also be due to the rise in the Mexican population. According to a study by the Migration Policy Institute, Hawaii has seen a Mexican population increase of 165% since 1990. There is like a huge population of Latinos actually here. We've um, kind of, yeah, embraced the Latino community here and they all come to eat and they're all of our regulars. Today, the Aloha spirit is reflected in the values of the Mexican restaurants. We're really grateful to be in Kauai, and we're really grateful that we allow, you know, to be making food for all Kauai. It's amazing how 
every person makes their own flavor. And especially, you know, when you make it in a good mood and you make it with love, it is even better. And it shows in how the customers are treated. We don't call them customers, we call them guesses, because uh, we treat them like, we, that's how we want to ask it to treat us, you know, like a guest, like a family member. The addition of Mexican restaurants in our Kapa family has created a truly unique mixed plate. We serve from our familia to the Ohana, and with mucho aloha, of course. This is John Marco Lumpe from Kapa High School for Hikino. Next, students from IAEA High School on Oahu will show you how to make a lei that every graduate will appreciate. Hi, I'm Justice. And I'm Cassidy. And today we're going to teach you how to make a money lei. As graduation season approaches, get your grass something you'll know they appreciate. Money! To start this off, you will need to gather your materials. You will need at least 20 crisp new $1 bills, any type of ribbon or yarn, scissors, invisible scotch tape, and two and a half inch by six inch construction paper matching the school colors. For each of the bills you will be using, you will need to make three half folds to divide the bill into eights. Fold it in half once, twice, and a third time to make eights. After finishing the last fold, you will need to open the bill back up and fold it, alternating back and forth along the fold lines you just made. When you reach the end, fold the bill in half horizontally so that you have a crease in the middle. For this next step, you will need to cut an 8 foot ribbon, however you may adjust the length to fit your graduate. Start by folding the ribbon in half and tie off the close end. This is where your lay will start. Place the folded bill in between the two ribbon strands after the knot. Make two knots to hold the bill in place. The bill does not have to be tightly held. Place a small piece of tape on one end and attach it to the other end. Repeat on the other side to complete a fan circle. Repeat the same steps with the colored paper. You can alternate the colored paper and bills however you want. And there you have it. One nice looking lay and one happy grad. I'm Justice Olifanzo. And I'm Cassidy Petrick from Aya High School. For Hikino. Now, from South Kona on Hawaii Island, students from Kua Okala Milolii Hipu'u Virtual Academy tell the story of a type of fishing that is indigenous to their village. In the middle of September, the people in the South Kona fishing village of Milolii hold an opening ceremony of the Opelu season. For centuries, Milolii has been famous for Opelu fishing. And some still use traditional fishing methods handed down through generations. These traditional methods are environmentally safe and help sustain the fishery for future generations. One man is not only still fishing the same way as his ancestors hundreds of years ago, he's also teaching the next generation to do the same. Kukulu Kuahuya still practices these traditional methods of fishing for Opelu to sustain his family. I learned about Opelu fishing to my dad, which he learned to his dad, and so forth. It is a tradition that is handed down to generations. Opelo is a, a bait fish, actually, that lives on a core. It's a scad mackerel um, that we use to eat dry, raw, we use for bait. Opelo is, is really good eating. So the opelo was real important for Ronnie because that was what was abundant down here. So people, all our families would hanai their own cores, take care of their own cores, catch their own fish when time for harvest, dry mostly everything, ship it to Oahu to, to, to be sold, and that's how they got their, their goods. The bait for Opelu, or Palu, is a green chum typically made from avocado, pumpkin, taro, and papaya. This bait is then put into our ka'ai bag, typically a handkerchief, and lowered to lure and feed the opelu. Six months into the year is the feeding season, where the fishermen hanai, or take care of and feed the opelu ko'a, or housings. The last six months of the season is for harvesting the opelu while still feeding them. We asked Kukulu why he thought opelu fishing was important. It helps me by supporting my family, you know, what I'm doing, taking care and then harvesting gives me more opelo to catch, 
to sell for my family. So that's why we do the hanai and the harvest. Taking care of the fish as much as they take care of you, that's the lesson Kukulu and others are hoping the younger generation will carry on for years to come. This is Hoku Subiono from Kuokala Biloli'i Hipu'u for Hikino. We are back at Kaiser High School at our trophy case. These trophies represent Kaiser's history in academic and athletic excellence. Whether they be from our football team or our math team, these trophies represent the morals of our school and the hard work and dedication of our students. Some of our alumni have made it to the top of their fields, earning them a spot in our Hall of Fame. Our final story takes us to the west side of Oahu, where students from Kavai Hona Okanaawo Public Charter School trace the sweet roots of the Hawaiian steel guitar. <laughs> Its distinctive twang and slides are staples of Hawaiian music today. The steel guitar has influenced musicians globally, but got its start more than a hundred years ago with a native Hawaiian man from the little town of Laie on Oahu. His name was Joseph Keikuku. I've heard several stories of how it got started. The one I heard was he was walking home on the train track and playing his guitar and his comb was something fell and hit the guitar and he liked the sound that it made this twang kind of a sound. Oh, you, that gave him an incentive to improve on the sounds. So he started practicing with this thing on the strings to get the sound that he wanted to and eventually ended up with the steel bar. The bar creates that sliding effect that you hear that is kind of like the signature sound of Hawaii. <laughs> The signature sound started to spread. When he was 30, Keikuku decided to leave Hawaii. He took his invention and his passion for Hawaiian music with him. Hawaiians were explorers. You know, they were great navigators and they loved to travel. And he wanted to travel. So he left and went to the mainland. And started to share their music and share their love of Hawaii with uh, basically the Haoles. They loved it. They loved the music. They loved the romance of the, the sounds. It went international, around the world, and, and so it became very popular. They loved the steel guitar. Not only did the steel guitar have a unique and likable sound, it had a very adaptable sound, one that soon showed up in other genres. All music, I mean, yeah, blues, rock and roll, uh, country western. Country western has big time steel guitar. Hawaiian, of course, still. Um, yeah, it's, it's all over the world now. And Joseph K. Kuku's invention, the steel guitar, lives on. The unique sound that he developed lives on, and thus the legacy lives on. So, steel guitar has influenced the world just by that one man. I'll go Joseph K. Kuku. This is Sarah Peterson from Kavai Hono Okana Uau Public Charter School for Hikino. Well, we came to the end of this episode of Hiki No. Remember, all of these stories were written, shot, and edited by students just like us. We hope you have enjoyed watching them as much as we have enjoyed sharing them with you. Tune in next week for more proof that Hawaii's young people, Hiki No. Can do.
broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.